all of that stuff that you've read was so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Did you know that the devil is scheming against you all the time? I mean, you kind of think that, but do you realize he's constantly scheming? He's constantly coming at you. Sometimes he's using the very things that you think you're taking a stand against. He's using those things to actually bring you down. I won't give any specific examples because I don't want any emails. I'll give you one, all right? Let me just give you one example. It's because it's, it's one of the devil's favorite moves. He does it over and over and over again. It's, it, I, maybe because it's effective, it always seems to work. It's his favorite move. It might be his only move. It might be the only move. He just has the variations on this move. The first time we actually see it, we can see this in scripture, is Genesis chapter 3, all right? Here, let's go back and look at it. Genesis chapter 3. What does he do? This is chapter 3, halfway through the first verse, he says this. He said to the woman, did God really say? Did God really say? That's it. That's his only move. It's just really effective. It's this whisper in your ear. Did God really say? You know why it works? Because of Eve and what she said, what she responds. Here, here, we do the same thing that Eve does. Catch it. See if you catch it. He's, here's what she says. She goes, God said, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Okay, what's the problem? God didn't say that. She added something to it. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Here's what God said. God commanded the man. He said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Sounds the same, right? But it's not. You see, Eve added a little bit more. She wanted to add a little bit of extra emphasis, so she added another rule, another burden to go along with it. She said, you can't even touch it or you will die. But God didn't say that. See, the devil knows scripture backwards and forwards. He may not know how it moves you, the heart of it, the life change that comes from it, but he knows the words. And so every time we misspeak with it, every time we use it when it's not, that's not what it says, he whispers in your ear, whispers in the person that you're talking to, did God really say? And it starts to just cause so much doubt. Eve begin to doubt. Eve begin to go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I am being kept from something. Maybe, I, maybe this is more harsh than it should be. Maybe, maybe all of this is more harsh than it should be. Maybe I'm missing out on something and it goes, you run down this track because you were adding to what God said. The kings did this constantly. The kings all start from a position of God is awesome, God's great, we're going to follow him and they add rules and they add more and they add more and then something starts to break because they had this whisper, well, did God really say? The Israelites they, they start off good. They're following. They're, they're, they're right along the path. And they kept adding and adding and adding. And then did God really say? The Pharisees, easy example, right? The Pharisees, they jump in and they add rule after rule after rule and laws and burdens. And they all starts from this place of we want to be worthy of this gift that is God. We want to be worthy of it. So let's continue to be better and better and better. And the devil comes along and says, did God really say? And everyone backs up and our lack of knowledge in the Bible grabs us and this easy opening begins to tear through us. 